the nine o'clock news. She would rather not watch the TV the whole day. Even if they, even if they would rather stay in darkness between seven and nine, but uh, at least be sure that uh, at nine they are there. At, at some point, I even had to exchange uh, our screens. Mine was a little bit smaller, so he thought maybe her screen was big and it was consuming too much power. So he had to exchange screens. I had a smaller one for my room. Uh, just to make sure that she doesn't miss a moment to, to watch the, 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 the daughter uh, on the screen. And uh, I came to realize how deep this was. On Saturday when I was talking to Helen, I visited the family. And uh, on that fateful Sunday, when she had a lot of questions to ask on uh, why this actually had to happen, other than questioning God, she, she went ahead to even question the mother. Like, Mom, I'm sure wherever you are, you saw all this happen. Why didn't you do something? You should have uh, not let this happen. And uh, as, as she was saying that, I was like, oh, so you should know that uh, Rita and Mom had that very uh, special bond b between them. And uh, I think of that again raised the many tributes I've read uh, from uh, friends and colleagues uh, since that Sunday, and how much so many people uh, are celebrating Rita. The many very beautiful memories she has left in, uh, in the hearts and lives of so many. And uh, I thought of uh, what about the so many others who've left us uh, before, with the mother being the team leader up there in heaven. They went and uh, found this city we are being told about in the first reading that new city, that new Jerusalem, uh, the beautiful houses that the Lord went to prepare for us, as uh, he promises in the gospel of today. Uh, and on getting there, they were so excited on finding a very beautiful world, different from this one. And uh, of course, they started thinking of the people they had left behind, and uh, I can imagine the many uh, people, for instance, uh, who had interacted with Rita when they were here. And uh, when the mother joined them in 2021, they were so excited. Ah, where do you mama Rita? Rita was ABCD to me. Like the many tributes that uh, we, we are writing and, uh, and telling now. And they are saying the same to, to the mother up there. Like, we really loved Rita, she was quite a big so she was quite friendly and all that. And the mother, of course, this being that special uh, last born daughter, and uh, of course how much she misses her as well. And I was thinking especially of we Catholics, and uh, every time we have an opportunity to celebrate Mass, uh, we always want to remember uh, the close ones, who, who left bef before us. Like I'm sure the many times uh, this family has been praying since 2021, they've always been uh, remembering the mother, uh, their dad, and uh, any other close person. And I was asking myself, what about in heaven? If for instance they have uh, a similar opportunity when God is going around and uh, Maybe they also celebrate Mass and uh, they are asked to present their intentions. And uh, of course, after having seen that beautiful city uh, with those beautiful houses constructed for all of us, a place without all the challenges that we face here, uh, the pneumonia that, that, that took uh, her from us, uh, the COVID and so many other things that we face here, and uh, I was like, what if these people, uh, when we are here asking them to pray for us so that we may continue living here happily, what if when they have uh, opportunities to, to make requests, they, they tell God, why can't you bring so and so? Like, this place is too good. Like, I really need uh, uh, to. to to see her promoted to, to this life as well. It reminds me of a question uh, Robert was asking that Saturday. 
that uh, not that it seems like God takes the best from uh, from this world. Does it mean the rest of us who are still here are not yet good enough to go to heaven? And uh, maybe definitely when uh, they are making those requests to God and or, on who should go to heaven, maybe there are those lists that God looks at and uh, he says, uh, this one is not yet ready. Like, go and bring me another name. This one is not yet ready for heaven. Mm-hmm. They still have a lot of uh, amends to do back there. And uh, maybe finally, Rita, at a time when we feel it was too early, uh, God finally said, yeah, 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 now this one, this one can finally come. And uh, when we are back here, down here, mourning uh, her death, uh, saying so many things about how much uh, uh, we wish she stayed a little bit longer, the many things she was yet to accomplish, uh, so Joe talking about uh, a, a program, uh, that was uh, to go on air very soon. Uh, of course, you all think about uh, Mia and so many things. And uh, we are here thinking of uh, how much we still needed her here. While up there, the story is different. That finally our prayer has been answered. We've been praying for you for so long. Uh, maybe immediately I got here, you were the first person I thought of. Uh, but uh, God told me to give you some more time to accomplish this and uh, when he finally told me it's done we are so happy to be told that you'll be coming anytime soon. Maybe there are those who will be saying when we got here we found your house uh, unfinished and uh, we've been dedicating our times to, to, to help the, the angels uh, complete your house as soon as possible. We really needed a person like you here. It doesn't mean that people out there are so selfish. They don't know exactly how much we needed Rita here. Uh, but I know by the time that uh, uh, if there was a decision to be made, by the time they came to that decision, they already had a plan for all of those things that are worrying us. And uh, at the end of the day, God's plans will always be better than our own plans. We may not understand how this is going to happen, but uh, I'm so convinced in my faith that the God that allowed this to happen has a plan uh, for all of those worries that we have in our hearts. And uh, in his own time, in his own way, in his own design, he's going to take care of all that. Let us continue to commit ourselves before him. Let us be conscious of that fact of, uh, uh, as explained by Paul in our second reading, that uh, our living, our dying, it's all for Christ. It's all for Christ. And uh, at the end of the day, we'll never be here forever. Maybe the only way we can prolong our days here is making sure that we don't create so many beautiful memories in the minds of the people that we encounter so that if they happen to die before us if they go to heaven and find our houses almost complete instead of helping the angels to complete the houses they would instead start making some demolitions here and there like Uyosikujiaraka when they are asked to present intentions on the people they would want to pray for so that they may be promoted to that glory, that they may never remember our names. That is just in case you find this word so good for you that you want to continue living here. Unfortunately, you want to, to live a life uh, without a story as beautiful as Rita's. Who doesn't want to see so many people uh, feel so comfortable around you, young and old alike. I was going through those tributes, and uh, uh, there are those very young journalists who would uh, join Rita, maybe thinking this one has been here for long, maybe she's going to, to harass me or something, and how she received them, how she, she made them feel at home, she feel appreciated. 
we all want such kind of a life. I know we are a people of faith and uh, we know and believe as well that uh, there's a place far much better than this. I know it's, too, it's always so hard, so difficult uh, to let go, to say goodbye to, to, to a loved one. But uh, we are worried about that because we are here. We don't know about the joys uh, that people feel when they are up there once they rejoin. Uh, those, like you can imagine now the many stories Rita has to, to, to share uh, with those she found there about uh, the time since they parted ways until now uh, and how maybe she feels she's actually in a better position to, to take care of all of us. She's like, I, I, I never knew that uh, being in heaven uh, will be of, of so much providence that uh, I can easily uh, pass intentions about my, my loved ones, watch over them in a way that I couldn't do when I was with them down there. We, we, we pray for that uh, life in eternal uh, joy for her as we continue to, to, to pray for the family these difficult times. Uh, these are times when, uh, as I was telling them the other day, there are no words good enough to, to console them. Sometimes there are even no friends good enough uh, to make them feel comforted. Sometimes not even spouses, not anyone. Uh, they are usually very personal moments. Uh, but slowly by slowly, I know there are people of faith together with the God uh, who allow this to, to, to happen, uh, we are all going to, to regain that lost uh, faith, that lost joy, uh, that lost peace, that light that uh, feels like has been shattered forever, and uh, it shall be well, it shall be well. May we continue to live uh, our lives faithfully, these are the small things that take us to heaven. Uh, you, you look at those things people are writing, they are not really very big things. They are those little small things, like Rita would just pass by and uh, someone was saying, asking, uh, would ask him whether he has uh, wet wipes to, to wipe off the, the makeup. They are those little small things. We can't all be called to be priests, to be nuns, to be preachers, but wherever it is that God has placed us, how diligently we perform those duties, the much that we show our love and care to the people we come across, and even to nature, there was a, there's a lot about how much he loved nature, all those is the accumulation of such uh, that eventually uh, we shall see ourselves in that eternal city full of joy and peace. God is good and all the time. Let us arise and offer our prayers to the Lord. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead, that God may establish the Christian people in faith and unity. Let us pray to the Lord that he may rescue the entire world from all the evils of war. Let us pray to the, world, uh, to the Lord, that he may be pleased to admit forever to the company of the saints, his deceased uh, servant, Rita Tenina, 
who once through baptism received the seed of eternal life. For this we pray to the Lord. Prayer for the church. We pray that the church stays true to God's message and proclaim it. Pray, we pray that the church will worship, adore, and praise God in spirit and in truth. We pray for the Pope, the Archbishop, the bishops, the priests, and all the liturgical leaders to follow Christ and serve humbly. We pray for their protection, witness, and example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for the country. Lord, we pray that you may continue to have hand upon this nation and that you provide our leaders with wisdom to guide us in the right direction. We pray for the country's prosperity even during these hard times. We pray for peace, stability in our country and pray that you bless the soldiers that guard our borders and all our security forces. We pray to the Lord. Hear us. Prayer for the family. We pray to our Lord mercifully to bring together and keep all families in perfect unity of love and mutual support. Instill in each member the spirit of understanding and affection for each other, that they may keep quarrels and bitterness far from them, and for their occasional failures, instill forgiveness and peace. May the mutual love and affection for parents set good examples. Instill in children self-respect that they may respect others and grow in mature independence. We pray, that the, we pray for the bereaved family that the Lord may comfort and strengthen them during these hard times. And we also pray for the sick in their families and their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for the sick. Father, your only Son took upon himself the sufferings and weakness of all mankind through his passion and cross. He taught us how good can be brought out of suffering. Look upon our brothers and sisters who are ill. In the midst of illness and pain, may they be united with Christ, who heals both body and soul. May they know the consolation promised to those who suffer and be fully restored to health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for the departed. Lord Jesus, holy and compassionate, by dying you unlocked the gates of life for those who believe in you. By your glorious power, give the departed souls light, joy, and peace in heaven, where you live and reign forever. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love, that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship, and their lives encircled by your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. May the prayer of those who cry to you be free the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins, and make them share us in your redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. For cover tray, use the pay bill displayed on the screens. Thank you.
as we humbly uh, present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Rita Tinina Yepan, we beseech your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour, may find in him a merciful judge, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hands. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, by your command that we return on account of sin to that earth which we came. And when uh, you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, and without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like, uh, like a default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip, our Archbishop, his assistant Bishop David, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Rita Tinina, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most dear spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have praised you throughout the ages, we may marry to be a to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
defend me, as they are of my death for me, and bid me come and that in the angels of the saints, I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Rita Tenina Yapan may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May be seated as I invite the MC for the next program. Good morning. God is good and all the time. Amen. My name is Dan Wangi. I have been Rita's colleague for first the first time she was at NTV, then now when she came back home until the day of her resting. And I shall be driving us through the program, the remaining part of the program, as we go into the eulogy and tributes. So without much ado, I will now invite Angela Yapan to take us through the eulogy. Good morning. My name is Anjana Yapan. Thank you so much for attending this Requiem Mass honoring the life of Auntie Rita. I am heartbroken by the loss of my auntie, but honored to have the opportunity to reflect on her life today with you all. 
Rita Tinina Yapan was born on the 20th of March, 1978, in Nakuru County to the late Dominic and the late Mary Yapan. Rita held a special place in the hearts of her siblings as the last born in a family of seven children, namely Helen, Irene, Justin, Jedida, Kin, and Claudia. She was deeply cherished as a sister-in-law to Timothy, Kenneth, Belmont, Agnes, and Macharia. She was the beloved and doting aunt to Lonana, Sanait, Joki, Yamat, Patita, Saitabau, Cedric, Kuntai, Lee, Kantai, Lindani, Melusi, Saidimu, Marie, Isabella, Lona, Nashilu, Sanare, and Silau. She illuminated in the lives of her grandniece and nephew, Skyla and Shakiri, showering with them with boundless love and affection. Rita attended St. Mary's Primary School and completed her secondary school at Maasai Girls School. She later joined Kenya Institute of Mass Communication and later furthered her studies at the University of Nairobi. Rita began her journalism career in 1999 at Citizen TV and continued to develop her journalistic and reporting skills at NTV and KTN. She was an experienced journalist and reporter who worked around the country and the world, reporting on various content with such an open mind and humility, touching the lives of people in all walks of lives. She has mentored and shaped the careers of many young people in her field of expertise. The media fraternity has indeed lost a gentle giant and her absence will be felt countrywide on our screens and in the daily lives of her colleagues. Rita was a doting mom to Mia Malaika and a loving partner to Robert Nagila. Her friends considered her a sister, a mentor, a confident, a constant sort of joy, inspiration and affection. She made her family and friends feel special and will always go out of her way to bring people together. She was passionate about her friendships and considered them family. Rita enjoyed good health until the 17th of March, 2024, where she passed on in her sleep. As family and friends, we will miss Rita, as will her colleagues and all those whose lives she searched in various ways. We are comforted that we shall see her again in eternity. Rest in peace, Rita. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for that. I will now invite Rita's niece, Olive Barrows, to give us the tribute on behalf of the family. Our world has been rocked. The foundation beneath us has crumbled. Akirita umetwacha kwa mata. We could spend countless hours expressing our love for Rita and her extraordinary qualities, but she knew that. So today, we simply wanted to share with the world the remarkable woman that Rita was. Little did we know that the world would reciprocate by sharing their experiences of Rita, her values, and the impact that she had on their lives. These tributes have left us astounded, not because we were unaware of her character, but because the extent of her influence is beyond comprehension. Since the news of her demise, we have been enveloped by an overwhelming wave of love and support, a testament to the person that Rita was. This has provided us with immense solace, yet it has also brought tears to our eyes. We knew Rita belonged to us, her family. However, through the tributes, phone calls, testimonies and messages we have received, we have come to realize the multitude of lives that Rita touched in various ways. Numerous tributes have been written, each narrating a unique story about Rita. What we may never fully comprehend are the countless unwritten stories that are being shared with us when people stop, stop us to tell us about their personal experiences with Rita. From the fuel station attendant who is left wondering who else will take the time to connect with her to the security guard who would inquire, who she would inquire about. Rita's legacy crosses borders as evidenced by donations made in her memory to support the most vulnerable instead of sending flowers by a friend in Myanmar. We believe that Rita rested with many people's secrets. She was a trusted confidant to family, friends and colleagues. Yet she never let one hand know what the other hand was doing. What was shared with Rita stayed with Rita. 
During discussions, Rita would listen patiently, allowing others to voice their opinions. And just when they thought they had found a solution, Rita would speak up, and the ahas would resonate in the room. A lady of few yet profound words. The saying goes that when you are inside a jar, it becomes impossible to measure your growth and the label on the jar remains unseen to you. Perhaps this encapsulates the paradox of how she silently conquered her world, yet in a manner that placed her in the spotlight. But how did she manage to devote so much time to her family and still give herself to the world? This will stay a mystery, but her selflessness will remain a standard we can only strive to achieve. As we bid farewell to Rita, we leave you with a question. If your tomorrow never comes, who will remember you and how will you be remembered? Go well, our precious Rita. You are truly the salt of the earth. Thank you very much, Olive, for the tribute on behalf of the family. I will now invite Robert Nagila to come and give his tribute. everybody. Over the past few days, the one question that has constantly rung through my ears from well wishes more than any other question is, how are you doing? Today, as I stand here before you, the answer to that question is, I am broken. However, broken things can be mended, whereas the loss of a loved one is absolute. We all spend a lifetime chasing a legacy that we hope to be remembered for. People like Albert Einstein spent a lifetime pursuing a legacy through academic excellence, and there are many others you will be aware of. What is remarkable, I find, is Rita Tinina established her legacy just shy of her 46th birthday. There is no doubt, and if anyone is, just look around you. We are all here because Rita impacted our lives in a special way. My sister Paula, who was unable to be here with us today, has called me a number of times over the past week to support the family. It is I who has ended comforting her because of the impact that Rita had in so many lives, including hers. Over the past week, I have read and watched numerous tributes to the remarkable lady that Rita was. Rita, when our paths first crossed, your beauty, hearty laughter, and warm heart touched me. You are also the most stubborn person I ever met, principled in your beliefs. Nina, last Sunday, your phone stopped ringing. Your passing has left a void that cannot be filled. But I am comforted with the fact that the memories of time spent will live on without us. My dearest Mia, your mother loved you more than anything else in this world. You were her best friend, her confidant in many respects, and every single thing she did was centered around you and your future. 
Know this. You are loved so much and there is nothing we would not do for you. Helen, Claudia, Irene, Justine, Jedi, Agi and Kim. You meant the world to your sister. You were the best version in her life. And she made sure that she shared her world with you. Belmont, Rita loved you. You were the second brother that she never had. You know that. Timothy, Masharia, she regarded you as elders and respected you as much. To her nieces, nephews, cousins, you will understand this. For Nina, family was the focal point of her life and you were her family. As I conclude my remarks, I would like to say a special thank you to all of you for the warmth and support that you have shown this family. Nation Media Group, I cannot even begin to put to words your support, emotional journey and loss at this time. For now, all I can say is Asanteni Sana. And last but not least, I would like to acknowledge the Honorable Fred Gumo, who is like a father to me. And when he first got wind of the news of Rita's passing, he has called me every single day with words of support and comfort. It is my prayer as we travel to bed, and I say this with a very heavy heart, a final farewell to Rita, that we all do so safely in the knowledge that each one of us had a shared memory with her, so we go to celebrate her life. I shall miss you dearly, Mamma Mia. Thank you very much. Uh, before I exit, I lost my dad last year, and Rita and Irene were there for the funeral. As many of you who've lost a friend or a family member, you know that she has always been there in every way. In his absence, Mishimura Gomo, who I've known since I was a baby, has been like a father to me and my family. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite him to say a few words and to condole with the family as well. Thank you. Uh, Britain's family friends of Rita. Well, Bob, as you have been told, is like my son. His father was my cousin. And we were also very, very close friends. When I heard this news, I was away in Kitale. I was surprised because it came as a shock. I didn't believe it because I know Rita 
And each time I met her, I asked her, when is this joyful day coming? When is it? You cannot be friends forever. And she kept on telling me, Mwishmiwa, don't worry, the day will come. Even when we were at Bob's father's funeral, I asked her again, when is this day coming? She kept on telling me, Mwishmiwa, the day will come. I didn't know that the day that was going to come was this particular day, which is a sad day which I didn't want to come to. But it is all God's wish. And as you all know, when God wants you, you'll have to go. As I was listening to the Father, he said that one day somebody said, and sometimes pastors also say, that God takes the best. That means that the Rita was better than all of you in this idea. Because he, was, he takes the best, and that was the best for that particular moment. Rita liked her profession. You know, the power of the press is a very important tool, and particularly when you are a politician. Because without the press, nobody will know you. The press acts as the mediator of the people and the government. Because it's only the press that can, can inform the public about what's happening, either with the government or with anything else. And it also informs the government about the feeling of the public. The most recent one, I as a farmer, must mention, farmers didn't know that they were buying soil instead of fertilizer. It was the press that informed them that the fertilizer that you are using is not the real fertilizer. But one surprising thing is that most of this fertilizer was being bought through Serials board, which was a government agent. And we are told that no stone will be left undone. The stone of corruption is very heavy. It's not easy to turn. So for the press to have given up this information, we are very happy that the press is playing a very big role and that's where Rita was. And we hope that any information that the government get through the press, the government will take action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Buonagumo. I will now invite Lois Muna to come and speak on behalf of the Friends. present, <clears throat> members of parliament present, the entire IPAN family, friends, all protocols observed, good morning and praise the Lord. Today is, a pain, today is painful because we lost a friend, 
a sister, a mother, an auntie, and a colleague at work. The group standing here in front of you is called the Strong Pillars, made up of Rita Tinina, may her soul rest in eternal peace, myself, Lois, Dorcas, Jerry, best known as 244, Judy Kadikeni, who is known as Judy Wetu, and Jay Nyaga, JN. These are the names that Rita gave us. Rita encouraged openness, increased attentiveness to despair, which battles to undertake and what to walk away from. She denounced drama and shenanigans. She strongly condemned pedals of lies. Rita summed all this into one word, Karagasha. Rita always stated boldly, I do not do Karagasha. If she encountered, she would walk away. We met Rita right about 20 years ago, a bond formed to pure sisterhood love. Over the years, this sisterhood blossomed to include our families. As well known, RT had to find a name for the four of us. According to her, she was looking for a word that would be a beacon of what we stood for. She came up with strong pillars, which meant should be strong through thick and thin, and then introduced pole bearers with the notion that when one of us passes on, <clears throat> we should bear a burden of riding with or walking with them to the final resting place. Unfortunately, we never expected the pole bearer patch to be executed any time. But hey, here we are. We dined together, uplifted and celebrated one another. We also took so many rides and trips together. I remember when we all took our parents for a parental blessings visit to Narok. We had so much fun. We danced around your mom and trying to dance like Masai. Your late mom was so happy you were happy. This Wednesday, we will take one more trip with you to Narok, a journey that's so hard to comprehend. RT, what do we talk about? What do we do? Why did this happen? Why too soon and why you? Our heart bleeds for our Queen Malaika. How will she hold on? May the Lord give her the strength that shall always guide and protect her in this trying time. Malaika, our dear, <clears throat> as the strong pillars will support you with the passion your mom exhibited. She was a siphon of love and grace, a narrative of courage and resilience. To the rest of the family, may you find comfort in knowing that RT made a broken, make something broken look beautiful and strong. Our prayers will always be with you and you shall keep Rita's legacy alive. Count on strong pillars any day. As we end this tribute, we find ourselves at crossroads of remembrance and farewell. RT, our ruler, you will always be our heart in, in our hearts as marked by the profound legacy you have left. Rest well, Mama. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies, for the beautiful tribute, and may you also be comforted. I'll now invite Ken Mijungu, the Deputy Broadcast Editor at KTN News, to give a tribute on behalf of the Standard Group. God is good and all the time. 
to the church, the family, the colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, and our cherished friends. Today we gather to honor the memory of a remarkable soul, a gentle giant whose impact resonates far beyond the confines of our hearts. Rita Tinina, a name etched in our collective consciousness, leaves behind a legacy that defies mere words. As we navigate the delicate terrain of grief today, let us also take time to celebrate the luminous life she left. My name is Ken Mijungu, and I stand before you as a representative of Standard Group, a family to which Rita devoted more than a decade of her unwavering commitment, KTN News. The television station she graced with her presence owes much of its essence to her tireless dedication. Rita was not only an employee, she was the heartbeat of our newsroom, a beacon of integrity, curiosity, and so much grace. Individually and collectively, we mourn Rita's passing. Indeed, the media fraternity fills the void left by her absence. That absence is a silent echo, a missing note in the siphony of truth-telling. Rita's journalistic prowess transcend headlines. It wove narratives that touched many lives, challenged the norms, and sparked conversations. She was more than ink on paper. She was the voice of the voiceless, the seeker of hidden stories. To Rita's beloved daughter, Mia, though our paths had not yet crossed until this morning, your mother's kindness painted vivid portraits of you. In the many photographs of you she shared with me, I glimpsed resilient determination and spirit and yielding to life storms. Rest assured, Mia, the world will not forget you. Your mother's legacy lives on in your every step and your every choice. Your mother loved you. Many would ask, why would Rita share with me photos of Mia and tell me her progress? Takes me back to 2017, when out of nowhere, Rita called me and told me, can I need a car? And I asked her, which car do you want? She told me a Vanguard. And I asked her, what's your budget? She told me, you tell me how much it will cost. Then I told her between 1.7 million and 2 million shillings. Rita told me, is that the over top, top, top Vanguard? I said, 2 million shillings is a lot of money for Vanguard. The next thing she said, to my account. She never bothered me until I delivered the car at I and M. To the extended Japan family, dear friends, and the church community, we extend our heartful condolence for Lenny Sana. May the balm of time ease your pain, and may memories of riches, laughter, and wisdom bring solace to you. As we grapple with the unanswerable, why she? Why now? Let us also remember that God's timing is sovereign. He gives and takes, yet his love remains unwavering. Mark 4.1.3 reminds us, And he rose and rebuked the wind and commanded the sea, Peace be still. The question is, when Rita was passing in her sleep, where was her God? The same place God was when the sun was being made on the cross. That was where God was. Now Rita's departure leaves us, yearning for unwritten chapters, the stories she would have penned, the truth she would have unearthed. She was more than a journalist. She was a seeker of justice, a weaver of narratives, and a guardian of democracy. Her diligence, incisiveness, and unwavering commitment to truth were her gifts to our newsroom. In the corridors of the newsroom, Rita was not just a colleague, she was a confident, a sounding board, and a friend. She trusted my judgment. Every time she would send me a script, I would tell away and Delia because I knew that script was solid. Challenge my assumption and sought guidance, especially when navigating 
the labyrinth of politics and legal intricacies. Rita's impact transcends headlines. Eight recites in the lives she touched, the story she told, and the truth she upheld. And as we bid farewell to this gentle giant today, let us remember Rita Tinina not with tears of sorrow, but with the resolve to carry forward her torch. Let us be the storytellers to the seekers of truth, the guardians of justice. Rita's legacy beckons us to write our chapters in courage, compassion, and unwavering commitment. May her soul find eternal rest, and may her light continue to guide us through the uncharted waters tomorrow. Rest in peace, Rita. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Ken. I will now invite Lina Skaikai, who is not only a friend and former colleague, but also the group editorial director and head of strategy at the Royal Media Services, to give his tribute. We human beings are perhaps the only of God's countless creatures granted knowledge of the inevitability of death. But on a day like this, we are, in a most cruel way, reminded of just how pointless and how worthless that knowledge is. Because in its wake, death assuredly leaves us defeated and frustrated, bitter and helpless. On days like this, we cheerfully turn to God our Maker with a myriad of questions, questions which we soon realize will not even be answered on this side of our existence. As a Christian fraternity, we shall later this week be reminded of the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the peak of his torture on the cross, we shall be reminded this Friday, precisely at around 3 p.m., of Jesus' agonizing cry, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani. We know what that means. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the sharpest age of suffering and in the deepest end of our grief, we too get there as our faith is tested to the limit as we seek to ask God why or even where were you? To the family of Rita, the Yapan family, to my brother Robert Nagila, and to beautiful Mia, we share your pain and stand with you. We humbly come to you at this time like a lifeless, the Tamanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Naamanthite, the three friends who visited Job after all the losses he suffered. And like them, we acknowledge today that no words that we speak today will be adequate to take away your grief. My last encounter with Rita was a month ago, right outside this church, next to the bookshop, to be precise. It was Ash Wednesday, the first day of this very Lenten season. Rita was a devout Catholic, 
and a stickler of the church's deep traditions and its very elaborate liturgical calendar. And as the high pressure nature of the Ash Wednesday Masses, for those who know hourly Masses here, our encounter ended up really brief. We agreed to catch up soon. It was never to happen. Nevertheless, I will always hold to many great memories of one of the finest human souls. In her core, in her most core, Rita remained in Nairobi as close as possible to the earnest wishes of any mother, a good child and a meaningful adult. Always proper, always well put together. Now the villager in me is tapping up. And yes, those like me and like Rita, born and raised up in the rural areas, always tend to judge people on these streets by how much Nairobi has destroyed them. And trust me, nothing beats a rural eye, that eye of a shark's mondo, when it comes to impact assessment. Rita withstood the polluting side of Nairobi, and she died intact. Success, fame, and money did not distort who she was at the core. So, where others get panel beaten by what we in the village called call Ulimwengu, or what you Nairobians call character development, Rita navigated this complex urban maze and flourished almost entirely out of the unfailing nutrients of good upbringing. I want to mean this as both a sincere tribute to Rita and a compliment to the family that brought up Rita. It is her strength of character and clarity of purpose that made every other story about Rita possible. One such big story, it's shared here many times, is her success in the career as a journalist. Rita was one of the reporters in the NTV newsroom when I joined the Nation Media Group in 2009 as the managing editor of the broadcasting division. We had interacted many times before, especially in the field covering news, but this became our first time to work closely together in the same newsroom. I quickly got to learn more about her journalistic attributes, such as her strong scripting skills and her legendary ability to beat deadlines. But one attribute always stood out for me, her disposition, her general professional attitude. In journalism, this is a big deal. A good attitude matters, and Rita always displayed the very finest. This made her the jewel of the newsroom. In a reporter, every newsroom leader looks for reliability, and Rita personified reliability. Rita's great, greatest, greater possibilities came alive in 2010 when we started pushing the limits of live television news, among other ambitious editorial experiments at NTV. As the National Media Group marked 50 years of its existence, we rolled out our first start-to-end outdoor news bulletins from the KICC. Later in the year, we had the referendum on the Constitution with our rolling coverage starting three days ahead of the August 4, 2010 vote on the new constitution. I remember in her referendum day sign-off, 
richest three words somehow ring sad today. This is it. It was after the 2010 referendum that Rita was introduced to Ankara News when we launched a live on location three day TV magazine weekend called the County Edition, for which I was ably assisted to produce by Joe Ageo, who was the head, was the head of news gathering, news uh, production, and Emmanuel Juma, who was the head of news gathering. For the toil and sweat this took, I will not at this point separate the story of Rita from that of every member of one of the greatest broadcast newsrooms ever assembled in Kenya's media history. Rita's county edition colleagues share every bit of that glory, as she does, as does the entire team that spectacularly and comprehensively covered the South Sudan independence referendum and the Ugandan elections immediately after. I am certain that Rita's spirit floating above us right now draws most of its smiles from those amazing memories and experiences. And I'm sure, colleagues, that Rita's spirit is proud of each one of you. I will not avoid to talk about Rita's physical attributes. As a journalistic, editorially ascertainable fact, Rita was beautiful. Secondly, she was smart, mentally and physically. Rita was an impeccable dresser. Fashion was her friend. She favored serious business like suits and trendy, even if with feminine cuts. There would be an occasion for a jeans trouser for a rough news gathering day, but the bottom line, Rita always dressed very smartly. One time, a persistent villager in me dared, dared me to advise a member to dress like Rita. The next day, I bumped onto the subject of my advice and the question came so am I dressed like Rita? My village instincts picked this very quickly that this is not, an, this is not a question it was an invitation to war to my younger colleagues managing newsrooms just learn how to communicate with ladies. Don't you dare draw parallels, even if in the name of freedom of expression. At this point, I still struggle to believe this is all about death. And indeed, the death of Rita Tinina Yapan. So I'd best take it back where we began. That is, back to God's own doorstep. In probing the depth of the mystery of death, we may have to settle on some assumptions like, maybe, just maybe, God grants us life as a loan. And just maybe, that loan that our life is, does not even have a repayment schedule. And maybe God can recall that loan as he wills. On Friday, this, this coming Good Friday, we shall be reminded of that very final cry of Jesus before he died on the cross. Father, unto you I commit my spirit. And to God, we commit the spirit of Rita Tinina Yapan. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will just quickly call Mr. Joe Ageo, Editor-in-Chief, the National Media Group, to give his 
reflux. And just to let you know, we have a mass that will be happening here. There will be a mass rather, not we have. There shall be a mass after this. That's why we are trying to wrap it up and vacate the hall. Thank you. Uh, the Reverend Kaji, the Yapan family, uh, friends and colleagues who have come to help us bid farewell to a great Kenyan and a great journalist. When I was coming here uh, over an hour ago, I received a message from an old friend who uh, wished me God's grace and comfort as I came for this event. Um, and she said, uh, it must be difficult as you give a send-off to a dependable team member. Now, dependable team, team member is one of the attributes, but it is an understatement of who Rita Tinina was. Um, in all the newsrooms that I've worked with her, she was not just a dependable team member. She was the ultimate team player. She was a consummate professional, as many of us have said. And so, for us at the Nation Media Group, um, the board of directors, the man management, and the whole family, and indeed the entire media fraternity. We just want to thank you very much for donating to us such a wonderful gem for the 20 uh, or so years that uh, she was in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last one week or so, the country has witnessed an outpouring of tributes as we continue to celebrate the legacy of my colleague and friend who departed from our midst so suddenly. Today we gather yet again to reflect on the profound impact that Rita had on earth through her exceptional storytelling that has been talked about all week and her remarkable character. It has been said, and it is indeed true, that Rita was more than just a journalist. She was a beacon of truth and compassion. Her words, like gentle waves, touched countless lives, and her personal attributes left an indelible mark on all who knew her. In her pursuit of truth and justice, Rita's narratives transcended the boundaries of mere news. They resonated with the hearts and souls of her audience, as the last one week has so profoundly demonstrated, stirring emotions, provoking thought, and inspiring change. Beyond her professional achievements, Rita's warmth, kindness, and unwavering integrity left an enduring legacy that will continue to illuminate our paths long after her earthly journey has ended. And many people here have talked about who Rita was. And I could repeat everything that my colleagues have said, Linas, um, and indeed even people from the family and all the friends and colleagues who have spoken. But this morning, because Rita was the kind of person who found a different way to tell every story. I choose to express the feelings of so many in this room and to immortalize her legacy in a brief poem that I worked on as I prepared for this day. And it is just titled, Rest in Peace, Gentle Giant. And if I don't recite the poem the way you would, Focus on the world. In the hallowed halls where angels tread, we gather neath the cross, hearts heavy as lead. For Rita, a beloved soul, has found her rest in the arms of the Father forever blessed. Two decades hence, our paths did twine in television's realm a stage divine. 
Yet, it was Rita's spirit, pure and true, that graced our lives with gentle hue. Her integrity, a beacon bright, in a world oft shrouded in darkest night. With grace and poise she trod the way, a muse of hope in every day. From the Hague's halls to the distant glades, Rita's voice rang out in serenades of truth and justice boldly sung in tales spun true in every tongue. Now, as we bid our dear friend adieu, her memory like a morning dew shall linger on in whispers light to the dawn of eternal light. Rest in peace, dear Rita, in God's embrace, in the glory of his mercy and grace, thy legacy of kindness and truth ever bright shall guide us home in his holy light. I thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. And now our last tribute will be by the Cabinetary, the Ministry of Information, Communications and the Digital Economy, Eliud Owalo. Karibu. To the family of the late Rita Tinina, the church, fellow mourners, I stand be, be before you this afternoon to you Lord guys, a distinguished professional, an accomplished journalist, somebody who has devoted over 20 years of her dear life to serve this country with dignity, with honesty, with integrity, with forthrightness. On behalf of everybody at the Ministry of Information, Communication and the Digital Economy and by extension the entire executive, I sincerely pass our message of condolences to the family, friends of Rita and the entire media fraternity. To those of us who have remained behind, please let us emulate and exhibit the values that Rita exhibited, while also at the same time espousing the virtues that she stood for. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, Buonasias. Um, I'd now invite Vincent Sudongo, who is going to give a vote of thanks. Good afternoon. God is good. Um, we, the family of Rita Tinina, would like to thank God for giving us Rita Tinina for the past 46 years. All of us have in one way or another been blessed by her and through her. We thank the church, Father Peter, we thank you for standing with us. Since morning you've been with us since we left to march and we thank you for the homily. We thank you, Father Wakanyi. Father Alfonso had to leave. We thank him very much because he had another mass. The choir, thank you for the beautiful melodies. One boy, thank you for stepping in boldly and making the first call for help on that fateful day. Robert and uh, Rita's sister, Helen, who were the first to arrive at Rita's home. We thank you guys for your courage and all the steps that you, you boldly 
boldly took thereafter. QZ and your friends and Rita's colleagues, we thank you for responding promptly and quickly to the family's calls. At this time, we thank uh, His Excellency, the President, Dr. William Samuel Ruto, for supporting and standing with the family. We thank the CSICT, Honorable Elliot Owalo, your support for the family at this difficult time. We thank the CEO, Nation Media Group, Mr. Steve, Mr. Steven Kitagama, for supporting us and taking the lead to help us plan and celebrate Rita's life. The media fraternity, Rita's other family, your support has been tremendous. A big thank you for taking charge, co-leading the meetings, meticulously, just like Rita would have wanted, all the beautiful tributes which will be archived and continuously ponder on them as we embark on the healing journey. The committee that has been working tirelessly to make sure this process of celebrating Rita, we thank you, led by our able chair, Duncan Hayamba, we thank you. All of us present here, all of us present virtually, within our borders and all over the world, every single person who has taken their time to condole with us, attend the meetings, pray with us, pray for us, send us words of encouragement, anybody who has helped us financially, we thank you. The support has been enormous from all walks of life, and we are deeply humbled by your outpouring of love. May, may our good Lord bless every one of you abundantly. Thank you. So I'll now invite the chairman of the committee, that is Dan Hanheimba, to just give us guidance on what's next. So, our friend Rita will be laid to rest a day before her birthday, and um, on Thursday she would have taken her annual leave to go and rest. Unfortunately, we are laying her to rest a day before she took that leave. Um, that's life. From here. Rita is uh, leaving Nairobi for good. She will never be back. So from here, the body will be taken to Umash Finro home in Nakuru. The family is leaving immediately. Tomorrow, the committee will be at home for the final touches on activities on the ground. On Wednesday, at exactly at, um, immediately she leaves here, uh, Catholic Church in Nakuru, he will be waiting to receive her and then uh, put her into the second last stop before the home. On uh, Wednesday, 6.30, there will be a very brief service at the mock. Exactly 7, the body will leave to their home in Mount Narok. The friends... Rita's Girls Club, they've requested the family that uh, the reason why Rita was taking leave, among other things, they had planned a road trip in a Range Rover. So the four friends being Judy, QZ, Njambi, and Jerry, they've asked the family that they will, they will fulfill that part of the bargain or the deal, and that they've uh, hired a Range Rover house 
so they will do that final road trip with Rita. Unfortunately, it will be from the mock to the home, but they are doing that just to fulfill the plan that they were to do with Rita in April. On Wednesday, once we leave Umash at 7, we expect to be home at exactly 9. There will be brief viewing. At 10, the service will start because the church will take over from exactly 12 noon and then that will be the end. So without further ado, because there's a, a mass that is starting immediately, allow me to thank you for your patience and thank you committee members for helping us do this. The family, thank you for trusting us with that huge responsibility. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. And as I hand over to the church so we can do the uh, recession, just to note that the following are going to be those who are going to escort Rita uh, out the aisle and to the house. Effie Mwangi from the Royal Media Services, Bernard Mwinzi, Irene Ikasiol, Olive Barrows, Zubeda Kananu, and Ken Bijungu. So as we are signaled by the church to begin our exit, please come and escort our sister. I hand over to the church. Asante. So before the final blessings, let me invite uh, my colleague priest to also say uh, a word, especially to the family. Karibu Father. God is good. On behalf of the Holy Family Basilica clergy, we condole with you, the family, and a special way on behalf of uh, our father in charge, Father Michael Ndishu. He asked me to say this to you, that people will forget the things you did to them. People will forget the things you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. how you made them feel. As one of the tributes from the family, they said, how will you, they, they posed a question to us, how will you be remembered? And what I asked myself is, who will genuinely cry for me when that time comes? Thank you, and may the soul of Rita rest in peace. Um, just a quick addition, as our sister is being escorted out, there is a request that we wave her goodbye and you pull out your phones and switch on your torches as she will be passing by. Thank you. So thank you very much, Dan, for leading that part. Uh, in a very orderly manner. So we continue to pass our condolences to the family. And uh, I was also sent by the father in charge uh, of this uh, cathed uh, cathedral, Basilica, Father Mike. Uh, he had been sent by the Archbishop of the Archdiocese, uh, His Grace Philip Agnolo. Uh, he, he happens to know Rita as well. They worked together uh, in her field uh, sometimes back and uh, he says Poleni Sana and uh, he's with you in prayers during this difficult moment. Let us arise for the final blessings. And sorry one final condolence was uh, from Father John Karioki who was supposed to be with us in this mass as well. He's a close friend to the family. Uh, he wasn't feeling very well today and uh, he was supposed to be traveling on Wednesday so he opted to take a rest today hopefully we shall uh, be together uh, on Wednesday as we lay Rita's body to rest the Lord be with you 
May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable, uh, unfathomable goodness he created a human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Let us respond. Amen. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ.
Na bila shaka hiyo ni baada ya wafu ya mwenda zake Rita Tinina ambayo imekuwa ikifanyika katika kanisa la Holy Family Basilica hapa jijini Nairobi. Wana habari mbalimbali umehudhuria ibada hiyo ambayo imefanyika leo hii mwili wake ukiwa umetolewa katika kanisa hilo sasa hivi na kuingizwa katika gari kupelekwa katika hifadhi ya maiti ya Umash katika kaunti ya Nakuru kabla ya kuelekea katika safari yake ya mwisho kule katika kaunti ya Naro.